All right, so we are going to talk today about what we call roots, squares, and cubes. So we've talked yesterday about what rational numbers are and identified them, put them into the right, um, the right groups. And so we talked a little bit about square roots yesterday. We're going to really look at those today, um, talk about what they are. We're also going to look at cubes and cube roots. Okay, so a couple of definitions first, square root and perfect squares. Um, you probably are familiar with these a little bit, but go ahead, pause your video uh, and get these down first. Okay, so a square root, one of a number's two equal factors. So coming down here first, five squared, remember five squared is five times five because they are equal factors. They're the same number that you multiply together. Five squared equals 25. So 5 is a square root of 25. We use what's called a radical sign to denote square roots. A radical sign looks like this. Okay, So the square root of 25 would look like this. And this means the square root of 25, that equals 5. Because 5 times 5 equals 25. So notice, you are not dividing by 2. Okay, You just kind of have to, to know this. You have to figure this out. What number times itself equals 25? Perfect squares are squares of integers. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, so on and so forth. After 36, we would have 7 squared, which is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, and 12 squared is 144. I would suggest as the school year goes on, you have memorized all the squares, the perfect squares, like what this list is showing, up to 15. So 13 squared, 14 squared, and 15 squared. I would go all the way up to that. So that is just going to help you a lot this year, but also as time goes on, it'll help you as well. Okay, so... Um, Thinking about square roots, we're going to look at a few examples. So we've got the square root of 64. So this is not 64 divided by 2. It is what number times itself equals 64, and that would be 8. Okay, so 8 times 8, or 8 squared is 64. So that's why that answer is 8. Okay, so our next one, we've got a fraction inside of the radical sign. So what I want you to do whenever you see that is I want you, that negative is going to stay outside. I want you to split apart that square root sign and make it look like this. This is the same thing. So the square root of 25 over 36 is the same thing as saying the square root of 25 over the square root of 36. This is a little easier to think about. Because the square root of 25, 5 times 5 is 5, or is 25. The square root of 36 would be 6, because 6 times 6 equals 36. So negative 5 over 6, that would be our answer for that. Okay, and then the last one there, you see a plus or minus sign outside of the square root. Um, this is called a plus or minus. It's a very unique name. Not really, because it's literally just a Okay, so whenever you see that outside of square root, that just means your answer is going to have that in front of it. Okay, so plus or minus the square root of 121 is plus or minus what number times itself equals 121? That would be 11. Okay, so 11 times 11 is 121. That's where we get that from. Okay, so... Those are the first three. I want you to pause the video, and I want you to figure out these three answers real quick. Okay, so coming back, negative square root of 144. The square root of 144 is 12, because 12 times 12 is 144. Okay, negative square root of 9 over 16. Remember, you want to make that the square root of 9 over the square root of 16. So that's going to become negative. The square root of 9 is 3 over the square root of 16 is 4. So negative 3 fourths. Okay, then our last one. <clears throat> 
So notice the, the, the negative sign is not outside, it's inside of the radical. So this is saying what number, what number times itself is negative 100. So let's say you said it was negative 10. Well, negative 10 times itself, a negative times a negative is a positive answer. So that's not going to work. If you said it was 10 times 10, well, 10 times 10 is positive 100, so that's not going to work. In fact, there is not any number that you can multiply by itself that would get you 100, negative 100. Because if it was negative 10 times itself, it would be positive. And if it was positive 10 times itself, it would be positive as well. So this answer is no real solution. There is no real number that we talked about that would get you negative 100 when you take the square, when you square that number. So one thing that I want to show, notice how once again I said this negative sign is inside the radical. If it is outside, like this negative sign, you can still do that. You just pull this negative over and it goes in your answer. But if it is inside the square root, you cannot do that. You cannot just pull it over to the, to the answer. So if you see a negative number inside of your square root, inside of the radical, no real solution, you can't do that. Okay, so last type of problem you might see is like an equation. It says x squared equals 169. So this is saying, another way of saying this is what is the square root of 169? Okay, and that's going to be x equals whatever answer that is. So what number times itself gives you 169? Well, that would be 13. So 13 squared is 169. That's another way of saying that. Okay? So we'll do the same thing for this next one. If t squared is 0.81. So when you see a decimal like this, you know that what's the square root of 81? The square root of 81 is 9. So you know that this is going to be something with 9. You just have to figure out where does my decimal point go. Is it going to be 0 0.9 or is it going to be 0 0.09? Well, think back to when we multiplied decimals a little bit ago. Remember, if we did 0 0.9 squared, it's 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. How many times am I going to have to move my decimal point over? 1 plus 1, I'm going to have to move it over 2 times, so it would be 0.81. So this answer is going to be 0.9. If I had tried 0 0.09, 0 0.09 times 0 0.09, I would have to move my decimal point 4 times to the left, and this 0.81 is not moved over 4 times to the left. So just kind of use your, your knowledge of decimal points with multiplying decimals, and that will help you know where your decimal point is going to go. Is it 9? Is it 0 0.9, 0 0.09, something like that? Okay, so those are square roots. We're going to continue on and talk about, uh, kind of go one step further and look at what are called cube roots. So go ahead and get those down. Pause your video real quick. So notice a cube root is very similar to a square root, but it is one of a number's three equal factors. So notice when you cube something, that is when a three is your exponent. So three cubed is three times three times three. So then the cube root of 27, what number cubed equals 27? That would be three. Not 3 to the third power, your answer is just 3. Okay, so we use this guy to denote cube roots. There's really not a name for it. It's just the square root sign with a 3 there. <coughs> but that is what a cube root is. And then perfect cubes are cubes of integers, like perfect squares were. So 1 cubed is 1. 
2 cubed is 8, 2 times 2 times 2, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 4 times 4 times 4, and it continues on. We'll talk about a few others here in a second. Okay, so let's look at a few examples. The cube root of 125. So what number cubed, what number cubed is 125? Well, that would be 5. 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 125. Okay, so the cube root of 125 would be 5. Okay, so next, <clears throat> Dylan has a planting pot in the shape of a cube. This is where cubed comes from because you cube a number. Uh, the, a cube has the same length, width, and height, so three dimensions that are all the same. And so that's why we call it cubing a number. Okay, but that equation, s cubed equals 8, and you want to find the length of each side. So in other words, s cubed equals 8. What number cubed, what number to the third power is 8? Or what is the cube root of 8? And that would be 2. s equals 2. 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the third power, gets you 8. So that's why that cubed root, the cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, so go ahead and do these three on your own. Pause the video. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> the cube root of negative 64. You might have looked at this and thought about what we just talked about a few minutes ago, that you can't have a negative inside of the, the root. That was for a square root. You can, you can have a negative inside a cube root. So, question. What is the cube root of 64? What number cubed equals 64? Well, that would be 4. So this answer is just going to be negative 4. And so let me show you why that's the case. Negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4. A negative times a negative is positive 16, but a positive times a negative is negative 64. So when you multiply negative 4 three times, there's three negatives in your problem, which means your answer is going to be negative. So negative 60 for the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. You can have a negative inside a cube root. You cannot inside a square root. So remember that. Okay, the cube root of 729. Cube roots get really big really fast. Okay, so actually, let's look at the cube root of 1,000 first. Okay, y cubed equals 1,000. Look at the numbers there <coughs> and kind of think, okay, what is that going to be? y would equal 10. 10 times 10 is 100, and then 100 times 10 is 1,000. So 10 times 10 times 10 would get us to 1,000. Okay, so y equals 10. So use this. The cube root of 10, or 10 cubed is 1,000. That means the cube root of 729, this is going to be less than 10. We know that. So try 8, try 9, try 7. And this answer is actually going to be 9. Okay, so 9 times 9 is 81. And then 81 times 9, we get you 729. So notice, 1 through 10 squared goes up from 1 to 100. But 1 through 10 cubed, adding that extra number to your exponent, you're going up to 1,000 by the time you get to 10. So exponents, when they grow, the number gets a lot bigger, a lot faster. Okay, so those are squares and cubes. One last thing that I will do is you might want to write down all of the different cubes of numbers so you have them. Okay, so let's do it right over here, and I would get this down on your paper. 
One cubed is one. Two cubed, we already said, was eight. Three cubed is 27. Four cubed is 64. We said five cubed was 125. A six cubed, six times six times six is 216. Seven cubed is 343. Eight cubed, eight times eight times eight is 512. And then we just talked about nine cubed is 729 and 10 cubed is 1000. So like I said, I would have those numbers together Write them on your paper somewhere um, so you know where to look at, and that's going to help you on these questions that you're about to work on, but also as you as you move forward. Okay, so once you got that down, you want to do these questions out of your books, those IN pages once again, and hopefully you uh, you get this lesson.